So we will start uh, the lecture number 28 today. Uh, we finished the last session with a very typical kind of uh, uh, routing uh, found in case of hybrid wireless network that was called as, uh, we'll see, I'll show you this uh, slide. It is called as load balancing in hybrid wireless network. So we had seen a, this kind of a diagram uh, where we had seen that uh, generally uh, towards the center of any uh, circular kind of network. So this gray area is a circular kind of network. And generally we found, find that the central position of this network is heavily loaded. That's why uh, what we find is initially uh, the data traffic towards the periphery of the network is comparatively lesser. And as we are coming toward the center of the network, within this gray area, a lot of uh, sensor nodes are placed. So as we are coming from the outer side of the uh, circular area of the network toward the inner side, what you'll find is toward the central position of the network, the data traffic is very high. That means whatever nodes are there toward the central position of the network, they are carrying uh, data very heavily. That means data transmission reception at the center happens uh, very uh, in a very rapid rate. Uh, that's why what you find is towards the center of the network after a certain time, uh, the, all the nodes, they the battery of all the nodes are getting exhausted. Because central position of the network, they are the nodes at the central position of the network, they are being heavily used. Okay. So this is a problem which is creating some kind of a ring uh, or inactive ring at the center, toward the center of the network. Okay, so this was a problem we uh, left uh, in the last lecture. So I left you at this juncture toward the uh, end of the last lecture. So to solve this problem, what is the technique? Technique is load balancing. Load balancing means if you are finding that there are within this circular area, this is the network area, there are a lot of uh, sensor nodes okay, in toward center, toward periphery, toward the mid region. So it should not happen that all the central sensor nodes are heavily used. What ideally should happen is uh, sensor node at the center, sensor node at the middle layer, sensor node toward the periphery, all should be equally used and all should get exhausted at a certain time or all should get exhausted at the same level. Here what's happening is as the central nodes are used very heavily, so all the central nodes are getting exhausted. That means their battery power is getting equal to zero. Okay, And all the peripheral and mid layer sensor nodes, they are not very heavily used because data traffic always is trying to coming from outer side to the central position. That's why this kind of an inactive region or a cutoff region is being created toward the center of any network. So this problem is to be avoided okay, through load balancing. If load balancing is done, uh, every position of the network, they will be uh, exhausted at the same rate. So this is the uh, problem objective. That is how to balance the load on all the nodes or data loads on all the nodes so that the central kind of void ring is not created so today's lecture is that today's lecture is mainly preferred ring based routing scheme for load balancing in hybrid wireless network so this is lecture number 28 and uh, through this lecture actually the first part of module 5 will be over okay so there are mainly uh, three schemes one is pirs preferred inner ring scheme then next is preferred outer ring scheme and in pirs what i'll be finding is i'll be telling you that pirs preferred inner ring scheme is same as preferred destination ring scheme so pirs is similar to pdrs uh, that we will find and what we will find is uh, PORS, that is preferred outer ring scheme, will be kind of similar to PSRS, that is the preferred uh, source ring scheme. So either mainly we have to understand PIRS and PORS. And diagrams are made very neatly. And these are very uh, frequently asked questions in the exam. So uh, whatever diagram is shown here, try to understand that. It is not difficult. And with the help of that diagram, you have to explain what is uh, load balancing. So first question is why load balancing is required? So load balancing is required so that uh, some nodes within the sensor sensor network or some node within the ad hoc network, they should not be overburdened. Overburdened means they are used repeatedly. Okay, So all nodes within the network should be used equally. That is what we want. Okay? And uh, if we are using all nodes within the network equally, 
at that time the void kind of thing will not be created towards sender okay, which is shown in the uh, this kind of slide okay, so this void toward the center of the network it should be so this is called ring formation so this ring whatever is shown here this ring is actually unwanted okay. so huge node failure due to excessive load that happens toward the ring formation with node failure so inside this uh, this is a void and this is actually the ring so this ring kind of thing should not happen this is ideal network everywhere uh, node active nodes are there everywhere but this ring formation is occurring because load balancing is not done here. okay so here what we are finding is what is the data traffic towards the center exactly if you do the projection below so towards the center of the network load traffic is zero and toward the periphery that is in the ring area so there's a solid portion of the ring there's a void portion of the ring so towards the periphery of the network data traffic is high and towards the center of the network data traffic is low and if the destination is here at the center there is no way that the data can reach to the uh, destination because around the destination at this region all nodes are dead so this kind of thing should not happen for that what schemes we are using for that what schemes we are using is called as load balancing in routing in hybrid wireless network so if you can check uh, as per as your book uh, two uh, chapters are uh, there from the book of murti <clears throat> so you will find all these details whatever uh, lectures have been conducted over last two three hours uh, in last week we had conducted some lectures so all these topics you will find in uh, chapter number 13 so that is the fifth module first part is totally from chapter number 13 of book murti okay. and uh, the fifth module your syllabus fifth module second part okay that is actually the recent advances in wireless network okay so there are uwb there is wireless fidelity system there is wdm there is optical wireless networks all those three four five topics you'll be finding from chapter number 14. so today with this load balancing and routing in hybrid wireless network we will finish uh, this uh, last topic uh, from the first portion of module five so let us check what is there um, so what we'll be finding is uh, so this is uh, why load balancing is required that I had already explained to you that is uh, we don't want this ring kind of formation in the network that's why we want all the nodes in the network should get exhausted at the same rate it should not happen that some node at the center is exhausted heavily and ring formation is occurring so you have to avoid this kind of thing ring formation by using a, a load balancing in hybrid wireless network that's the thing so this introduction was there uh, on the last day and uh, whatever we are doing today is the solution for against this information now check this is the situation okay, this is actually called as preferred ring based routing scheme okay. so in the first two slides i have told you actually what is the situation and then there will come some three four different protocols by which we will see how the uh, load balancing is occurring or how actually the data propagation is taking place from the outer side source so source will be somewhere here it will be called as source src so this might be the source node and this might be the destination node okay so how dif in different ways the data is getting transmitted from the source to the destination so data will be carried by all the nodes okay so there are different protocols there are different logic by which the data will come from the source node to the destination node without affecting the central part so this part should not be void that means this node and this central node which are there in the central area they should not get exhausted okay that is our main aim let us go through what is said the routing protocol conveys the global topology to all the nodes in the network okay that means whatever is happening within the network uh, whichever nodes are exhausted whichever nodes are within uh, the circular path so this whole area okay so these are hypothetical circles like uh, whenever one area is there suppose belgaum district they are hypothetically divided into different parts so these circles are actually not uh, shown in the network okay so these are hypothetical circles so these you can say as one hop circle one hop circle means suppose if you want to send the data from the base station to this uh, 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 node which is there in the first second 
third, fourth, and fifth cell. Okay, so how can you send that? So from the base station data goes here. So this is one hop distance. This is second hop distance. This is third hop distance, and this is fourth hop distance. Okay, so uh, by four hops, the base station to uh, sorry, uh, from here to here, this is first hop. Base station to uh, this node, okay, which is in the red circle. Red circle is nothing but ring one. Then there is a green circle, which is the second circle, ring two. Then there is a pink circle, which is the ring three. Then there is a purple colored circle, which is ring uh, four. So this should be ring four. And finally, there is the black circle, which is called as ring five. Okay. So uh, this is the kind of a thing uh, which we have to. So everywhere the same mistake is there that a purple circle is called as ring five, but the purple circle is actually ring four. So that correction you have to do. Um, so what you have to do is we have to transmit the data from base station to this uh, node, which is there at the outer side. So it will be going towards one hop, two hop, three hop, four hop, and five hop. A reverse can happen that uh, the source node can be this one at the fifth ring, and uh, the data may be transmitted to this node which is there in the green ring or in the ring two. Then what are the different protocols? So the routing protocol conveys the global technology uh, topology to all the nodes within the network. So routing protocols such as DSDV. So DSDV is nothing but the table driven routing. We have seen it's a dynamic count kind of routing. So this was the first routing protocol we had seen in case of module two. And fish eye state routing. So fish eye means uh, toward the center the data traffic should be very high so that we had seen that is called as fish eye protocol and we have seen the topology for that as well okay so this is these are the mainly two ways dsdv and fish eye through which uh, the hwn will uh, be routing the data from the source to destination or destination to source uh, using the uh, global topology each node builds a connectivity matrix with the center of the network using the Warshall's algorithm so for every node how the data is connected to the base station because all the uh, data should come to the base station so uh, this base station is something which is generally not there in ad hoc network but base station is there in hybrid wireless network because i told you that uh, hybrid wireless network is a mixture of infrastructure based system and infrastructure less system so whenever i'm talking about infrastructure less that is actually ad hoc type all the nodes uh, this yellow color uh, small dots are actually the nodes. Okay, so they are actually creating an ad hoc network. And this blue thing at the center, this is nothing but the base station. It is written below. There is a blue thing, uh, this uh, triangular kind of thing. This is ring zero. So this is actually ring zero. Uh, this is at the central position. That's why this is calling a ring zero. This is the VS at MCN. So MCN uh, is a, a protocol that we have seen. This is a another the transmission paradigm we had seen that so if you see our syllabus you'll be finding that in next generation hybrid architecture we have seen mcn hwn and sopran okay so mcn type of uh, uh, network we are using this is the ring zero and this is the center of the wireless network so hwn center there is the uh, base station so using the google global topology each node so every node how it connects to the uh, base station so for that, uh, uh, scientist Warshall, he has given an algorithm. So how many links will be created or how many links may be created? So there is a matrix. Okay. So the matrix is actually determined uh, by O n cube time, where n is nothing but number of nodes. So these are some trivial uh, data actually given to you. Do not worry much about it. So if this thing wants to, so if there are 20 different uh, nodes inside it, so how this uh, uh, node will contact to this base station so how many possibilities are there so if there are 20 nodes so possibilities 20 raised to 3 okay. so uh, bs number of links generated is determined as n cube o n cube time that is 20 raised to 3 so if this node wants to talk to base station it has to take the help of the other intermediate nodes so if there are 20 other intermediate nodes so this can talk to this network and there may be 20 raised to three different kind of links possible. So huge num number of permutation combination are possible. Okay. So once the center is determined, that means base station, the rings to which the node belongs can be determined. So as soon as we know this uh, center point, then we have to draw this hypothetical circle. Hypothetical means imaginary. They are directly not there, but for better 
data dispatch or for data better data communication we can think of this hypothetical circles so we can see that within the ring one there are two nodes within ring two that is the green okay so in uh, between ring one and ring two so between this position there are one two uh three four nodes okay in ring three that is the uh, pink kind of thing so there are one two three four five six seven nodes likewise okay so as the area of the ring increases number of nodes within the ring increases okay so once the center of is deter determined in the the ring which node belongs can be determined so ring is an imaginary division of the network into concentric rings about the center of the network so from the center of the network in concentric circles we can show uh, the rings okay so they are not actually drawn they are hypothetical rings and generally rings are one hop distance away from every uh, node so ring is an imaginary division of the network into concentric circles about the center of the network determination of the center is fairly straightforward in case of the hwn as bs can be placed uh, ideally at the network center it also lies geographically at the cell center so bs bs is this uh, blue thing okay the bs can use the received power once the uh, control channel or the GPS information to determine the approximate distance of the node from itself and thus divide the nodes into various ways. So actually this GPS keeps track of all the different nodes and how much will be the power required uh, to transmit data from any node to any node. All these things can be determined by BS. Okay, so BS is like the principal of a college who is keeping track of every small details within the network. So how much power will be taken from to transmit uh, data from this node to this node, okay, or any intermediate node, okay, from this node to this node, how much power will be required uh, for data transmission? Everything uh, will be known or will be uh, calculated correctly by the base station. So that is what it is saying. It also lies the geographically cell center. BS can use the received power over the control channel or the GPS information to determine approximate distance of the node from itself and thus divide the nodes into node into various rings so all the nodes can be divided into various rings we can find there are different rings now the point is uh, what is meant by preferred ring based routing scheme for load balancing in hybrid wireless network so you can see here three schemes okay so let us check so the choice of number of rings is decided by the base station distance from center refers to the hop count from the center i told you uh, in ad hoc wireless network, the center is a node which is determined periodically from the topology information obtained using the routing protocol. So whenever in the network discovery stage, when all the nodes are uh, placed in certain situation, after that base station is determined in the ad hoc wireless network of HWN type. So thus the distance from center uh, in, in this case refers to the hop count from the center. So uh, if you want to send data from one node to other, so from this base station to this receiver node. So how many hops are there? So this is one hop, two hop, three hop, four hop, and five hop. So we can determine. So every hop is nothing but uh, from one ring to the other ring data transfer. Refer ring based. So now we are entering the today's topic. Refer ring based load balancing scheme can be used in wireless mesh networks by finding a center which is closest to the gateway nodes. These three schemes proposed for low distribution and throughput improvement are. So first one is prefer inner ring uh, routing scheme. Next is prefer outer ring routing scheme. And if we understand these two, from there comes prefer destination ring routing scheme. Okay. So mainly we have to understand these two, PIRS and PORS. So PSRS and PDRS will be uh, similar to the first thing. So here are three different uh, uh, things shown. So I'll be showing all this diagram in a bigger way. I have made them uh, all these diagrams. So next slides I'll be showing. So variation of this three scheme is preferred source ring routing scheme. So PSRS. The key idea behind all this scheme is that any traffic generated by a node in ring I. Okay. So from ring I, the data has to go to ring J. Okay. That means at I, the source node is there. At ring J, the receiver node is there. Okay, so in that case, it must not go beyond the rings enclosed by ring I and J. So uh, what the main idea is that uh, the data should flow from uh, ring I to ring J. So the source uh, node, which is there, that is at ring I and destination node is there at ring J. So the it has to come from ring I to ring J and it should not be 
the data should not be flowing here and there at different places and in a very specific manner it should travel from node i uh, sorry ring i to ring j and what are the logic we will see okay so this is not uh, the preferred uh, ring based routing big but this is actually the shortest path routing okay but you can say this is the actually the figure zero or this is the uh, logical zero so you have seen may, maybe you have seen dijkstra's algorithm okay so this is the shortest path algorithm shortest path routing okay just check this is at ring 5 okay there is the src so src is nothing but the source it is there at the ring 5 and destination ring is there at destination is there at ring 1 so dst stands for destination so what we want is data should be transmitted from source to the destination so what is the thing what uh, it can happen uh, the shortest path uh, through the nodes okay so uh, all the location for uh, all the nodes are known to the base station okay? and base station will be uh, initiating all this data transmission so this blue line you can check okay this blue line so from this node data first comes to this node so from five it comes to four then from four it comes to three and from three it comes to two then two it comes to one and from again central it goes to the green ring so this is the shortest path so this is uh, not following any protocol so it is not following preferred inner ring it is not following preferred outer ring this is the shortest path okay so how shortest uh, in how shortest time in how shortest path you can go from source to destination or data can be sent from source to destination that is found by this algorithm so this is dijkstra algorithm or this is the shortest path routing this is what uh, we are not explaining in uh, this uh, load balancing kind of a thing this only tries to and you can check that it is actually accessing the central area also and uh, too much use of this node which is preferred at which is placed at the central area okay this node will get exhausted okay this we don't want so as long as possible we are not supposed to touch the nodes in the central red area so this is a very big agenda because we found in the initial slide that the central area node is getting exhausted and a void is getting created okay but uh, that's why uh, the central node uh, should be avoided from any kind of data communication okay. so for that uh, there are three scheme first scheme is called as pirs and whatever pirs scheme you are studying that will be same as pdrs as well what is, what is pirs stands for preferred inner ring scheme preferred inner ring scheme what is meant by preferred inner ring scheme you just check so this is the source node or i'll take the bigger diagram okay so this is the same thing pirs pdrs this is a previous slide so here some theory is there you can go through i'll explain so this is a pirs uh, there's a mistake this should be ring four only instead of five you have to see ring four okay all other things are same so this these are just names okay ring five ring four don't worry about that you can the diagram is very properly drawn so you can understand okay so what is pirs preferred inner ring scheme data has to be transmitted so this is the source node and this is the destination node what are the uh, constraints constraints is it has to use inner ring maximum what is the inner ring inner innermost ring we should not use so this is the innermost ring we should use this as less as possible just outside to this this green and between green and red this is the inner ring okay so this red is innermost ring but between this green and uh, red this is the inner ring and destination is situated at the inner ring in this pirs what happens is we have to come to the inner ring as fast as possible that is the first thing okay so we have to come to the inner ring as fast as possible and you can uh, rotate or you can transmit data through the inner ring that is possible so from here first hop from here second hop from here third hop from here fourth hop so just by one two three within three hop it is entering the inner ring okay and then within inner ring it will be traveling to come to the destination so this is actually pirs algorithm very simple to understand as soon as possible by the shortest distance you should come within the inner ring okay and after that you have to travel uh, within the inner ring to come to the destination this is what is said here the same diagram is shown here so from source to destination that it has to come so this is the destination okay so first from fifth to fourth it has jumped fourth to third third to second it has jumped okay and then um, it is traveling within so after it is jumping within the ring two 
then it is uh, rotating so within this ring 2 so there's the ring 2 then it is rotating within the ring 2 to come to the destination so just check preferred inner ring routing scheme is very simple actually you can write in your own language uh, a packet must be preferably routed through the inner ring inner of the two rings for the nodes belonging to the same ring the packet must be transmitted in the same ring okay so first as soon as possible you have to come towards this ring where the destination is there and then rotate the uh, destin or rotate the arrow within the inner ring so as destination is there within this uh, ring number 2 first jump from ring 5 to ring 2 as soon as possible okay and then rotate the data within this ring 2 this is the algorithm the packet must be transmitted in the same ring so after jumping here it is not going outside this uh, green ring now it is staying within the ring and coming to the destination after uh, one two and three hop so one two and three hops are taking uh, to bring the data from the outer ring to the ring number two and then three hops are required one two three to take the data from uh, this node toward the destination node so within this uh, green uh, ring, we can travel as much as possible. So uh, for the nodes belonging to the same ring, that is the green ring, the packet must be transmitted in the same ring. For nodes belonging to the different rings, the packet must go across the ring in radial direction. So radial direction means uh, from one ring to other. Okay, And same ring transmission means which is happening for the last three links. Okay. So first three communication from here to here, from here to here, and here to here. These are called as radial communications. And last three communication, this, this, and this, they are called actually the same ring communication. So for nodes belonging to different rings, the packet must go across the rings in, in radial direction. And all angular transmissions, uh, there is transmission within a given ring, that is sender and receiver transformation must take place in the inner of the two rings of the source to the destination. For example, in the figure, the source lies in the ring five. Okay, so there's the ring five. Please uh, treat this as ring four. Black ring is ring five. So source is there at ring five, while the destination is there in ring two. There is a green ring. Okay, hence no transmission must pass through ring zero or ring one unless avoidable. So this uh, central path we are avoiding. So this is the main thing. Why are we avoiding the central path? Because we don't want these two nodes within the central ring to get exhausted. Because this node and this node, they are actually the uh, speaker for the base station. So anything the base station wants to transmit, it will happen through this node and this node, which are there in the central position. So for routing, this central two nodes we should be keeping aside. We must not use this thing as much as possible. Further in the path trace, the transmission reaches ring 2. There is a green ring from ring 5 before the angular transmission begins. Okay. Uh, tracing the route uh, in the scheme only requires changing the weights of the edge of the adjacent matrix uh, of the graph before running Dijkstra shortest path algorithm. Overall complexity of the finding of the route in say is same in the shortest path routing. That means whenever we are coming the radial direction, that is from the ring 5 to ring 2, in that case, we have to jump as uh, much as possible. And once we enter the ring two, then we can, we are in the same ring where the destination is. Okay. So then we have to use the Dijkstra path, Dijkstra algorithm. So after we reach here, then we have to use shortest path algorithm that how can we go to uh, the destination without uh, any communication taking place within the central region. So from here to here, from here to here and from here to here. So there's the shortest path without disturbing the central ring. Because we should not want, we don't want that these two uh, uh, nodes in the central ring uh, to get exhausted. This idea you have to understand. So very simple thing. Uh, so there's the same uh, diagram is shown. So these are the jumps we have shown like this. Now check uh, what is PORS. Okay, so preferred outer source ring based uh, routing scheme this is called as PORS or this is called as P source that is preferred source routing scheme. Previous one was preferred destination routing scheme. Now this is called as preferred source routing scheme or preferred outer ring uh, routing scheme. What happens in this case as long as possible uh, first the data should stay within the outer ring. So in previous case initially very fast the data was coming to the inner ring and then it was staying in the inner ring Toward the destination. In case of URS, the data should stay within the outer ring as much as possible 
and then find a path and then jump and directly come to the destination like this. So this is exact reverse of the previous scheme that was PIRS. The packet remains for the maximum time in the outer of the range of the source and destination. Okay, so this is the source uh, node, not necessary. The ring five will be always the source node. Uh, this ring four can also be the source node in certain times. So in this case, uh, the data will remain in the outer ring as long as possible. And then whenever it comes, uh, whenever it finds that it can jump to the lower ring, very fast it should jump and reach to the destination without any communication happening in the central ring or ring one. Okay, or ring carrying the base station and the two uh, central nodes. So no communication should happen within this ring because we don't want any void to be created within the central uh, red ring one. Okay, that we don't want. The traffic generated by ring I, so I here is uh, ring five. Uh, for ring J, so J here is ring two. So traffic generated by ring five for ring two must not go beyond the rings enclosed by the ring five and ring two that is nothing should come in ring one this is what this line means further the packet must be preferably routed through the outer of the two rings in other words for the nodes belonging to the same ring the packet must be transmitted in the same ring initially as much as possible and finally it should jump to the lower ring for nodes belonging to different rings the packet must go across the rings in radial direction in all angular transmissions must take place in the order of the two rings okay so in figure the source and destination rings are ring 5 and 2 respectively and the angular transmission takes place in ring 5 that means initially uh, the data should be staying in the outer ring as much as possible and then it should come here and when it finds that the path is there for destination directly it should jump uh, and across the different rings and it should come to the destination so if you see this was the previous case so first it was outer ring outer ring outer ring and then when it was coming to the inner ring it was using the shortest path algorithm dijkstra algorithm and now in this case it is staying outside 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 and then when it comes to the close to the destination now after coming to this node it is using the shortest path algorithm and coming to the destination and always it is avoiding any kind of communication to the central part of the ring third is preferred uh, destination source uh, or routing so this is pdrs or psrs the two schemes presented earlier make a trade off between hop count and load distribution so number of hops should be less and load distribution should be even this is the consideration the PORS, PORS means the previous thing, this one. So, okay. So, here you'll be finding the number of hops are less. So, how many hops? One, two, three, four, five. In PORS scheme, hops are five. But in uh, PIRS, one, two, three, four, five, six. So, PIRS is having more number of hops, and PORS is having less number of hops. So, that is what they're saying. The PORS affects the hop count more than the PIRS. That means PORS hop count is less. PIRS hop count is more. So affect means affects positively. But the main goal is to move the load from the center toward the periphery of the network. But in both cases, we are finding that no communication is taking place through the central node. Whereas uh, initially, whatever uh, shortest path routing we had been using there, the central node was uh, carrying some information. And we are avoiding this thing. So this figure zero, which is shortest path routing, this we are avoiding because this kind of routing was creating a void uh, in the network as we have seen here. So only shortest path routing might create a void in the center. So what we are finding here, this kind of routing might create a void in the center because too much use of this node will create a void in the network. So PIRS and uh, PORS, so PIRS is the same as uh, preferred destination ring. So here PIRS, this uh, green ring is actually the destination ring. So main communication is taking place within the destination ring. That's why the same diagram can be used as PDRS. And uh, this case, this is called a source uh, ring. So this uh, ring five is actually the source ring because source is uh, kept at the uh, ring five. That's why it is called as preferred source ring uh, routing scheme. Okay. So PDRS is same as PIRS and PSRS is same as PORS. Okay, but the main goal is to move the load from the center toward the periphery of the network. 
Okay, so in this case, you are finding that uh, there is no usage of the central uh, uh, area for the transmission of data between source and destination. In the previous case, also you are finding the central node, central area is not used for transmission of data between source and the destination. So this is the main goal of uh, PDRS and PSRS. So PDRS and PRS, PSRS attempt a strike, uh, attempt to strike a balance between the two. Okay, in PDRS, the angular transmission takes place in the ring uh, of the destination node. So that is what we told you. So this is PDRS, same as PIRS. Here, the, the main uh, transmission takes place within the destination ring, uh, which is told here. So PDRS uh, main uh, transmission takes place in the destination of the ring, while in the PSRS transmission uh, takes place mainly in the source node ring. So you can check here, main transmission is taking place in the source ring. So source is kept at ring five, and main transmission is taking also place in the ring five. So these two schemes are a hybrid of PIRS and PORS. That is, they represent PORS in some cases and PIRS in other cases. Also, the average hop count in PDRS and PSRS lies between the PIRS and PORS. So you can say that this uh, PDRS and PSRS, that is the destination routing and source routing, is the average of PIRS, that is inner ring and outer ring scheme. The rule followed by PDRS or PSRS is described in what follow. So all these things are explained already. I'll just go to the last line in the examples used to demonstrate PIRS or PDRS. Both are the same. And PORS is same as PSRS. So this figure one, whatever is shown. Okay. So this is same as uh, inner ring scheme or a destination ring scheme. And here, this is figure two. This is outer ring scheme or source ring scheme. Now, load adaptive routing throughout uh, enhancement of load balancing. Uh, there are three slides. Uh, I cannot complete it now. So we'll be doing this part in tomorrow's lecture. That's all. Uh, the slide will be posted uh, in your group. Please go through. Thank you.